Good day, uh, fellow mourners, the parents of the late John Fadila Shweda, children, family, and friends. My name is Petu Siamba from Arundu. Uh, I'm recording this message in honor of my friend, Johannes Kadila Shiweda. Um, uh, the reason for recording this uh, video is because I could not make it to Ovalboland today due to unforeseen circumstances. Uh, I'm recording this message uh, just to say and appreciate the fact that John was a person that availed himself to me as a friend. I met John through his call-in programs on national radio. That was telephonically. I would always call in during his programs, whether it was hit the jackpot or the music programs and all that. So that is how we connected for the first time. Moving forward to 2013, I came to meet John in person, and that was in Swagamund. We had a workshop that was organized by the Ministry of Information and Communication Technology. I was employed by that ministry then. Um, the first time we met was, was not strange as such, but I reminded him that I was one of the regular callers from, the, from Rondo. So whenever he used to call, I mean I used to call, I would be always referred to, you know, Kavango River, the crocodile and all that. He even used to tell me that you are always calling from the crocodile direction. That, how, that is how fun, funny he was. Yeah, when we met in Swakopmund, we had a day together in the workshop, during the workshop, and then after that we went out with me and uh, Dr. Ben Mulongeni. Went around, first it was at um, the Jetty restaurant, and then we went to one house where we stayed in the evening. We had a bride there, and uh, we chatted and we talked. So that was the time when I became closer to John. Coming back to Windhoek, I would always pop in at his house when he was available or when he was around. So we would talk, chat, bry and all that. That was this, his style during weekends. And then, if you ask me who John was, I will tell you that John was a very friendly guy, smart for that matter, intelligent, very intelligent, but stubborn. Yeah, stubborn, underlined. Yeah, I'm saying he's stubborn <laughs> not because he was bad. He was just a person that you need to convince in order to believe your points. And that is a sign of intelligence. Because he was smart, he knew a lot, and you wouldn't just tell him anything so that he would believe you. 
At times I used to call him, he would ignore my calls, he would tell me, he would call me back, he was in the meetings and all that, but then I believed and I understood him because I knew that he was a very busy person. This is one person that would ignore you for the whole month and then all of a sudden you'll just see him calling, telling you, oh my friend, I miss you. Okavango 3, that's the name that he gave me. He even called me Okati. Now, some of you will be wondering why he was calling me that. He called me Okavango 3 and Okati because of the story that happened uh, some years back. I, I believe most of you heard about it, where a tree was cut and then it fell down and then it stood up again. So that particular tree was nearby my village, just on the outskirts of Rundu. So when I told John this story, he gave me that name, Okati, or sometimes he called me Kavango Tree. No, it was fun. It was fine with me. I did not have a problem with it. So that's how we used to call each other. And I always used to call him Ndokotora John or Kadila. That's the name that I used to call him. As we moved forward, if I'm not mistaken, speaking under correction, two years back, John called me and asked me, if I knew Tina. Now, Tina that we are talking about is the mother of uh, Elle, the small daughter. John asked me if I was related to Tina because when they met Tina, Tina Shininge, for that matter, he he probably was told that uh, Tina had uh, relatives in Rundu. At that time, my uncle, Sikongo Haihambo, the executive director and the minister of uh, trade and industrialization, was the chairperson of the board of director at Namota. Now, John knew that uh, that the Sikongo Haihambo was my uncle. That's my mom's uh, younger brother. And then I told him that that lady, Tina, is my cousin, first cousins for that matter. Because our grandparents are siblings. I know most of you, you will relate to this history between Kavango and the Ovamoland. My great grandparents went to Kavango with the Lutheran missionaries. That is when the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Ovambo and Kavango was established. The church we call Elsin today. My great grandparents went with the Finnish missionaries to Nkurenkuru to work with the missionaries. At that time, they had four children. They are twins, the firstborns, Samuel and Michael. They had another daughter, Costa Kafute, and Albertina. So these are the children of uh, Samuel 
Chininge and Elina Mwutukange. Those are our grandparents. I'm the grandchild of Albertina Chininge, who happens to be named after, I mean, who happens uh, to be the namesake of Tina Chininge, the mother of El. And Tina is the granddaughter of one of the twins that I've mentioned today, Samuel Chininge. That is how I am related to Tina. I'm not recording this message because of Tina or because of the meeting between John and Tina. I'm recording this message in my personal capacity as a friend to John. That is just to say that the meeting of John and Tina was not through me. They happened to meet and only that John found out that we are related. The day he called me and told me about Tina and I explained to him that we are related, that is the day he told me that, oh, you must start respecting me now hmm? because I'm your in-law, I'm your swara now. Then I said, John, <laughs> don't play with me. You will have to pay for this crime that you have committed. Since you took my cousin, I'll also take one of your cousins. So he started laughing and even uh, through these insults, you know the jokes that we used to make, not really meant, but uh, it's how we talked. So we laughed about it and then he said, yeah, this child that Tina is carrying, whether it is a girl or a boy. That is why when I wrote my post on Facebook in dedication to John or Kadila, that is what I meant when I said that he gave me my mbushe. That is the reason why I even wanted to come. That is why I felt that I have that conviction that I have to pay his last respect, but I could not manage. That is the reason why I even recorded this video. To say, John, thank you for the great and the good times we had. It was fun. We enjoyed together. You were, like I used to say, that you are my stubborn friend. But that's nature. That's how people are. That's why I even said on, the, on my Facebook page uh, that uh, sometimes you might have stepped on other people's toes because of your behavior and all that. But it's nature. That is human nature. But you are a great person. You are a good guy. And one thing that I almost forgot mentioning is the love for your family and your children. You love them. I know that. That is for sure. I remember that there were always kids in your house. You were always making fun with them and all that. So I appreciate that, what you have done. And thank you for the good memories. Thank you. Go well. My promise is I'll come December. I'm coming to Awamboland in December. I'll have to make sure that I pass and visit your resting place and visit your house. Pay my last respect so that your spirit can go well. Go well, my friend. And I will sign off with your statement that you always said. Eina piliku iza kani kara na irugana. That is what John always said whenever he called me. Eina piliku iza kani kara na irugana. 
and it is translated as the reason why I could not come is because I was doing something or I had work to do. That is what it means. Eina pirikuiza kanikara nairugana. Go well, my friend. Let us all be consoled by the fact that John had lived a, a very good legacy behind. He was the voice of the nation, and I can call it that way, the voice of the nation, just like National Radio or NBC. I remember there was a time when they had that slogan. That was John. He was the voice of the nation. He was the voice of National Radio. Let me sign off and say to you, my friend John, thank you for knowing me. Thank you for giving me that mbushe. And thank you for being there when I needed you. Thank you for being my friend. May your soul rest in peace. I thank you. <laughs>